horrifying. The NYPD arrested a 23-year-old man in connection with that firework explosion in New York City's heavily Jewish Diamond District last night. This is just one in a spate of recent anti-Semitic attacks across the country. The NYPD is charging the suspect with a hate crime, among other counts, and investigating the other incidents as such. Joining us now to discuss this and more, geopolitical analy analyst Matt Brodsky. Welcome, Matt. What is your reaction to all of this? Look, I think it's sadly disgusting. Unfortunately, some of this has been predictable. We've seen last summer violence in many cities throughout the United States. But then we started seeing very specific anti-Semitic attacks, especially in New York, and you wouldn't hear anything about it. Now, you couple that with the way that the lockdowns were imposed, again, in New York specifically, where it seemed that the mayor there really just had a problem with Jews gathering when it came to Jews praying. It was not the same uh, type of, of effect when it, was, when it came to anyone else. Now, with this situation, the left is continuing to try to portray this as it's some form of anti-Israel sentiment. But look, this is frankly just plain anti-Semitism, and it's not being covered by most media. It wasn't even in the New York Times today. It's someone has to actually step up and do something about it. That's right. It's grotesque, and it has absolutely no place in our country. The White House signed a bill to combat anti-Asian hate this week, but with the uptick in anti-Semitism in our country, Matt, do you think that the White House needs to say more about this? Do they need to pass an act to protect Jewish people? Look, uh, Jews in general aren't uh, people that want acts to be passed in their defense. What they want is law equally <laughs> to be enforced throughout the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact is, when you are going to have, uh, when you're obscuring what, who is causing this, then that's going to be a big problem. This is happening on the left, the rise of progressivism. There were weeks of wall-to-wall -wall coverage when Trump was misunderstood in, uh, from the protests that were in Virginia. This is now happening. People like me have been saying the rise of the progressive left is bringing anti-Semitism. You couldn't get the actual Congress to censure Elon Omar, the representative from where I grew up in Minneapolis. You couldn't get her to be censured uh, a couple years ago. This was coming. We all knew it was coming. We said so. And now they're just going to pretend that it's not a rising problem in their, in their midst. And it's not something that Biden seems willing to address. And it's certainly not something that Representative Schumer is going to try to address. Yeah. And it's shocking, indeed, that Representative Schumer would not address this, given his constituency, obviously. According to the Anti-Defamation League, during the week of May 3rd, there were 131 attacks. For the week of May 10th, 193. That's a 40% increase in anti-Semitic attacks. What do you think should be done to combat these numbers? First of all, I think we need to be honest, because when, when the left is going to say that this is just about Israel, and then they obviously from there will say, well, if there wasn't an Israel, then there wouldn't be this type of anti-Semitism. Let's recall that there wasn't a modern state of Israel for a millennia or so, and there was anti-Semitism. That is one of the reasons there is a state of, of Israel. The reason, the, what we need to do, frankly, is to have the law enforced equally. That's just, it's a position that people on the right tend to have, which is we want equal treatment. That's what equality is. It's not special treatment. And by calling out uh, the wrong groups of people and not addressing where the rise of this hatred comes from, which is primarily on the left, we're leaving a large blind spot, and that's not going to work out well for a lot of us. That's right. I'm glad you brought up the nation of Israel, the state of Israel clearly under attack right now, and again, a grotesque anti-Semitic attack, uh, indeed, from the people who are firing the rockets. But an ABC reporter shockingly asked Joe Biden about this at the White House, and the president gave a stunningly decent answer. Go ahead and listen. 
Do you recognize that there's been a shift and an evolution in your party? There is no shift in my commitment, the commitment to the security of Israel, period. My party still supports Israel. Let's get something straight here. Until the region says unequivocally they acknowledge the right of Israel to exist as an independent Jewish state, there will be no peace. Matt, we have about 30 seconds here. What are your thoughts on that? You mentioned Ilhan Omar, obviously a voice of the modern Democratic Party. What are your thoughts on what the president said there? Look, I was actually impressed, and I would have a feeling that he may not have even meant to say it, because it is important when an American president says that Israel needs to exist as a Jewish state, because what that means in the conflict is that there won't be a separate Palestinian state while you have millions of Palestinian refugees coming into Israel to completely change the character of it. Whether he is able to apply this type of pressure over Congress when it comes to resupplying Israel, uh, uh, we only have a few seconds. Yep. Then I think we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Matt Brodsky, Mideast geopolitical analyst. Thank you so much again. Thank you.